I'm Lori Duncan, physical therapist in Colorado, and welcome to Blog Talk. In this episode of Blog Talk, have it right now while you're watching the video. Um, but the biggest thing about plantar fasciitis is it's really quite painful. If you don't know exactly, we'll get into some of the anatomy in just a second, but it's pain. Here's Ichabod showing you, right? It's pain right there at that heel where the plantar fascia inserts. And so, you know, when you really start to look up information about plantar fasciitis, one of the things is um, stretch your calf. But what if you don't need to stretch your calf? What if it's actually not a mobility issue for you? It might be, but what if it's not? Okay, the other thing you get is roll your um, arch, right, on a ice water bottle. Okay, fine, but it's not really getting to the reason you have plantar fasciitis. And then my favorite, not, is let's get that little brace, right, that goes at the end of your foot at night and just hold the foot in that dorsiflexion or that flex position. I have never prescribed that to one patient for plantar fasciitis. It does not help and it just pulls right here on the Achilles instead of actually making a change into the muscle and the fascial elements that might be causing it if it is a mobility issue. But here's the thing, what if it's not a mobility issue? Like I said, it could be a stability issue or it could be a strength issue or it could be a combo. So let's dive into a little anatomy before we actually talk about what could possibly causing the plantar fasciitis. So before we get into a couple of anatomy pictures, just really quickly, if this is my foot or your foot, <laughs> the, the plantar fascia, this is my calcaneus or my heel, and then these are my um, metatarsal heads, okay? So the calca or the plantar fascia inserts at the calcaneus and then at the metatarsal heads. And we do know that when we're in pronation or our foot is flat on the ground for gait, whatever you know we're doing, that the plantar fascia is a little bit longer, millimeters longer. And then when we come into supination or what we call the closed pack position for us to do push off or propel through space, right? That we do know that it shortens a little bit. And one thing that's really interesting is that this has been termed the windless mechanism of our foot, right? The plantar fascia. A windless mechanism is an old crank. So think about a water wheel, right? And there was this little tiny wheel right here, an old um, crank that would make the water wheel go around. So they call this a windless mechanism, right? Because it's this very small movement, but it helps propel us through space. So sometimes it can also not just be the calf, but the length of the plantar fascia. And I've got something to show you for that. So here is the most superficial layer of your foot. And you can see right here, this plantar aponeurosis or the plantar fascia and inserts right here at the calcaneus. And then it goes all the way up to our metatarsal heads. So this is our first superficial layer. But guess what? We have four layers of feet muscles, four. So let's look at layer number one. The first layer, if you take off that plantar fasciitis, is that you're left with this um, adductor hallucis and flexor digitorum, right? Some of the other movers of our feet. Then if you go to the second layer, you're left with now this quadratus planti and the lumbricals which are super important when it comes to stability at our feet. Then in the third layer, right, we have even more. We have like flexor digiti minimi. We have uh, another part of the lateral head of the flexor hallucis brevis. And then we go to the fourth layer, which are their inner osseae. This is actually even a better picture. So it's all these little different inner osseae. So really the fourth, this fourth layer and the second layer are the two that are the most important when it comes to the stability at our foot. But the plantar fascia at that very beginning, right there is what gives us all that pain. So why do we get plantar fasciitis? Well, it can be a lot of different reasons, right? It can be you've had extra weight on your body for some reason, like I got it after I had my kid because I'd never had that kind of weight on my system. Okay, fine. It could be because of poor shoe wear, especially flip-flops if you wear them too much. They're good for some things, but they're not great for just like 
shoe wear all the time. I've actually seen people hike in flip-flops before. So that can be a reason. It can also be that you're just have, you have weak feet. Most people have very weak feet. We don't think about it, but I just told you that there's those four layers of feet muscle. Um, it could also be because your glute is weak. Yes, yes. It all the way comes up the chain, right? That's a huge stabilizer of our lower extremity. Um, it could be because you have tight calves. You're just somebody who's like, I've always had tight calves. Maybe that is your issue, I don't know. But here's the thing, when you start to get mobility into that calf, you have to retrain it with stability in that new range of motion. So no matter what, you have to have some sense of stability at your foot and your soleus, which is the deep calf, along with some mobility and some strength to really get out of dodge on plantar fasciitis. Is it gonna happen tomorrow? No. But if you work on what is exactly needed for your foot, clinically, it always goes away. Okay, so if you want to know if you really need to be stretching or if you really have a length issue and that's causing your plantar fasciitis, a very tested way to do that is to get yourself into a half lunge, 90 degrees. And then keeping your heel down, you're going to see how far that knee goes over your toes. <laughs> right? Theoretically, it should be about four inches. So if I show it on myself, right, I'm in that 90 degree position and I have my knee heel down and I get that four inches. So if that's true for you, then you know you don't have a length issue. So then what is it? Okay, so maybe it's a stability issue. And so that's working on the deep intrinsics of the foot, right? Spreading our toes and what we call toe yoga. But it also might come down to your glute. And so one of the best ways to work on some glute stability is to bust out a little Pilates, right? So if you're laying down, your legs are slightly forward, my shoulders and my hips are stacked, you would just lift this leg up and down. One of my favorite things to do is to point and flex the foot at the same time. So that, right, so if I'm down here, so that I'm actually moving through, right, the foot like I would during the gait. Another one for stability is that you wanna try and kick on the soleus. So one of my favorites is also a play on Pilates, but you bend your knees a little bit to do some running. This is actually something that I did when I would get out of the bed in the morning when I had it because it just helps warm up the fascia, but at the same time, it's kicking on the stabilizers. So you can do it with your legs straight, right? Where you have one foot come up and then you switch it in the air. We call it Pilates running, okay? But to really emphasize the soleus, you wanna sit your glute, you know, sit down into your glutes and then do the same thing to really activate the soleus going up and down. The other thing that's interesting about this particular movement, if you do this, so this is not this, by the way. <laughs> this is actually lifting and exchanging in the air. I feel my glutes, I feel my deep muscles of my feet, I feel my soleus, I feel my core, right? Is that if one of those ways feels tight, then that actually tells you that you're missing that uh, extensibility of the plantar fascia, and that would be an excellent one for you. One of the most research things that we have is to do calf eccentrics. So this actually is a little bit of stability and it has a strength component and it has a mobility component. So an eccentric, if you've ever heard of a negative in the gym, is where you go up on a one count and lower on a three count, and these work great in your stairs at your house. But these I always prescribe for people with plantar fasciitis because we know from research that it does help. So you're gonna stand on your stair and you're gonna go up on a one count, down two, three, four. Up on a one count, you can hang on. Down two, three. Okay, so as you're trying to figure out your plantar fasciitis, make sure you really think, is this a mobility issue? Do I need to be mobilizing the bottom of my foot or do I with that Pilates running or do I need to stretch my calf? There's lots of ways to stretch your calf and do you need to stretch your soleus and your gastroc or do you need to stretch both? Okay. So then you also want to look and be like, do I have weak feet? 
Does it hurt for you to walk on uneven surfaces like rocks and stuff like that? I mean, not sharp rocks, but if it does, if you're like, yeah, that really does bother me, you probably have some weak feet and then possibly that soleus and then possibly that glute. And then always start adding in those eccentrics, right? And just remember that this is blog talk for education. You should always be looking for your local physio, physical therapist to help you along in this because they can also do some of that beautiful manual therapy that will make it feel so much better. But this will at least get you on the right track until you can get an appointment, right? And dive into the reason that you have plantar fasciitis. If you enjoy this content, please go ahead and subscribe. And again, thank you for watching and have a really great day.